What is up guys? It is me, Real American Politics. Back again with a new video and I am back from my vacation. So as many of you can tell, I was kind of gone for about a week. I had a couple pre-recorded videos, not to leave you guys 100% hating. But today we are back with a new video and we're starting off with a popular suggestion actually. This is what if Barry Goldwater, of all people, won the 1964 election. 1964. So, this was a game-changing election. This election pretty much changed everything. It flipped politics on its head. Everything went to crap. Cats and dogs started to rain. And this was the shift that killed the liberal, ra liberal wing of the Republican Party. While at the same time, the conservative wing of the Democrats started to show their cracks. The old scholar, blue collar, conservative Democrats were starting to slowly begin their retreat from the Democrats to the Republicans. You saw this in the Deep South big time this election. And as of now, this is the election that changed pretty much everything. This is the one that turned Republicans into a more Southern conservative party. Well, turn the Democrats more into a liberal-leaning, more neoliberal now, party. Northeastern, Western Coast party. So, this is an intriguing situation. What if Goldwater somehow won? Now, this is just going to cover the election, because, quite frankly, Goldwater winning everything would change everything. Everything would just flip on its head. Richard Nixon, I won't even talk about. That gets just... Oh boy, this is interesting. So, if you don't know who Gary, not Gary, Barry Goldwater is, he is interesting. I may make my own video on him. He's a fairly interesting guy. And no, he's not the father of modern conservatism. That's bullshit. Don't listen to people that say that. What he did do, however, was he caused the realignment of fully start. Now, there's debates about the realignment, and we can debate about that for now, but... He was the one that realistically got the old-fashioned, socially conservative, traditional Democrats to switch to the Republicans, while the liberal-leaning Northeastern Republicans started to die out. He was a libertarian on economics, while mostly socially conservative. I mean, he was against the race stuff, he was against the, the marriage, he wanted just traditional marriage, traditional families, nuclear family. He was awful on abortion, though. <laughs> we will just ignore his stance on abortion completely. Doesn't exist. Fake news. The point is this. What was the map in 1964? Before we even start, um, red is Lyndon B. Johnson, blue is Goldwater. Um, <laughs> and you look at the swing map. And you look at the trend map. You look at just the swing map. The entirety of the nation, except the deep south, swung heavy for the Democrats, for Lyndon B. Johnson. Now, why is this? Why did the entirety of the nation swing that much Democrat? There's two things, all right? One of them really didn't cause this swing. The other absolutely caused the entire nation to hate him, hate Goldwater. The first one was the Civil Rights Acts and the Civil Rights Bills the voting rights bills, all that stuff. There was outrage by more conservative Southern Democrats that Lyndon B. Johnson, from the South, in fact, Texas, was pushing for something that would infringe on, you know, the traditional values of the Deep South and the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, all that stuff. Not going to get into it. It's a very controversial topic. Want to make my own video on it? I may do it, but... Essentially, Southern Democrats were furious about this. And they pretty much voted heavy for Goldwater. I mean, Goldwater got 87% of the vote in Mississippi. That's here or there, if that's good or not. But the point is, this was ground-shaking election, as you can obviously tell. But the second reason, the first reason, did cause a huge shift in Deep South. But... Was it the main reason that the entirety of the North basically wanted Goldwater dead? Have you ever heard of the famous Daisy ad? 
If you don't know, go look it up. Go look up Daisy Ad 1964. Well, let's just say Goldwater's campaign died that instant when that ad was published by the Johnson campaign. Essentially, it showed a girl playing outside called Daisy and a nuclear strike hits her. She gets blown up by a nuke. It's gruesome, I know, but that's not too far off from some of the blunders that Goldwater said. I mean, he essentially wanted to use nuclear weapons against the Russians. He wanted to use nuclear weapons in Vietnam. He wanted to escalate somewhat in Vietnam, but still wanted to use nuclear weapons. Yeah, no, I, I think you're going to not do too well with that. And you saw this in everything. You even saw this in the county map. The only part of the nation that really stayed with Goldwater were the traditional, very conservative parts of the nation. And the more economically libertarian parts. So, now what? What could have changed for Goldwater to potentially win? One thing could have changed this big time. Well, two things. One was not to pretty much gut the entirety of Social Security. We can debate about Social Security, but as of now, you get the point that Social Security at the time was a very popular program. Medicare was, like all that stuff. But Goldwater pretty much said, ah, screw you guys, we're going to cut it completely. If he would have just been a moderate on him, be like, okay, you know what, how about this? We'll give you guys essentially vouchers. So you guys can use that money, that Medicare, Social Security money, privately, or you could stay with the government. But no, he wanted to defund it completely. He wanted to get rid of it. That was the first thing he could have changed. The second thing was, do not essentially say you want to go to a nuclear war with Russia or the Soviet Union. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. He wanted to nuke the Russians, essentially. He wanted to use nuclear weapons, and it's just not pretty. And what he could have also done was continue his raid on you know, the fact there are some communists invade the Democrat Party. That may not be true, but based on what we're seeing today, I wouldn't be surprised if there's communists and the frickin' Democrats back then. The point is this. If those three things happen, what would the map look like? And again, this is stretching it. This is with Lyndon B. Johnson, a very popular president. Not because he was good, by the way. He was one of the worst presidents we've had in a while. But he was popular because of JFK's assassination. So if those three things happened, and he somehow botched it completely, that his popularity because of JFK was destroyed, what would the map look like? Well, you see that all of these light red states, you notice them, right? Let us just say Goldwater wins every single one, including the Deep South, his home state of Arizona, let's just say he wins all of these, you know, light red states, or, sorry, light blue, sorry, it's called Atlas, it stinks. Let's just say he was able to win all of these, right? I believe that is it, yes. You notice something, he's not there yet. Um, yeah, Lyndon B. Johnson, even if you carried all the light red stuff, all the light red states, um, you, you see, there's a problem still. Um, you need to flip two more, three more states probably to even win the election. Now, you could make two possible arguments. One is the old-fashioned bellwether Missouri. Let us just say Goldwater pulled off Missouri. Still isn't enough. So now this is where we have to start kind of you know, realizing how much of an idiotic campaign Goldwater had. I mean, folks, he needs to win one state that's pretty much either Ohio or Michigan. One of the two. What, how can he win that, I wonder? Hmm, what's, a, what's different about those states? They're not economically libertarian, all right? They may not be the biggest fans of certain stuff that LBJ did with the certain great society or the great scam. But here's the thing, though. These are states that Goldwater still should have won. I mean, go to the county map. 
and you notice all this light red stuff. He could have ran up the vote in the old-fashioned Franklin County area, Delaware County area, all that stuff, all those light red counties. He could have won most of these. But here's where he needs to somewhat become an economic moderate on Social Security. If he was economic moderate on Social Security, like in this scenario, he will be. He can pick off the state of Ohio, and he is the next president of the United States. Now, okay, this is stretching it, by the way. This is flat out stretching it so far you can't even see it. Because it's going to be hard to say he would win Ohio, Missouri, let alone the rest of these states. But this is most likely his best chance of winning. He needs to flip the bellwether of Missouri, which was a bellwether at the time, and of course Ohio. And all the light red stuff, or light blue, shut up. Same thing. The point is, this is how Goldwater could have won TLDR, too long, don't read into it. If he was more of an economic moderate, he was more for vouchers instead of just, we're going to abolish Social Security. If he wa didn't say he wanted to nuke the Russians, he could have done this. And if Linda B. Johnson didn't have the absurd popularity that he had. Like, he could have botched it big time, but he was lucky he didn't. But anyways, this is my prediction, or I guess this is the way Goldwater could have won. And this is just the first part. Next episode, we're going to be talking about his first couple of years of presidency and what the midterms will hold. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit the little bell, and yes. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.